Today, I've got my famous roasted butternut squash soup recipe for you. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. If this is your first time here, my name is Pamela and I like to share deliciously easy plant-based recipes. So if those are the types of videos that you like, be sure to click that little red subscribe button down below along with the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. This week, I have a often requested recipe at the holidays. It is my famous roasted butternut squash soup recipe. Um, the soup part of it is creamy and smooth, and then there's a spicy pesto that goes on top. It is absolutely delicious. There are never any leftovers, and if there are, people fight for <laughs> the leftovers to take home. That is how delicious, delicious it is. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so starting off, we are going to be roasting a butternut squash. Now, there's actually a couple different ways that you can roast a butternut squash. Um, you can actually roast it whole if you like. Um, it does take a lot longer because it's whole. Um, I am actually going to be cutting mine open because I want to save the seeds. Um, this particular butternut squash is from a local farm. Um, and so I want to save the seeds so that I can grow my own for next year, um, which also means that I couldn't microwave it ahead of time to soften it up before I cut it. Um, so there's also that option as well. So um, you need a really sharp knife which mine is but butternut squash are still very hard to cut so to make it easier you can uh, microwave it ahead of time uh, for a few minutes uh, just poke a couple holes in it with um, a knife or a fork um, so it doesn't explode and then you can um, cut it open um, if you would like or you can again like I said roast it whole so I am just going to struggle with mine try not to cut myself <laughs> and then I will scrape the seeds out and again like I said save them for next year so that I can plant them and grow my own look at those beautiful seeds all right and then I've got a baking sheet here just lined with some parchment paper make sure it is parchment paper not wax paper and I'm just gonna place these face down put them in a preheated 475 degree oven for 45 minutes and they come out fork tender. As you can see, I have already tested them <laughs> to make sure that they were fork tender before I pulled them out. But that is what fork tender looks like. The fork just goes right in. And I'm gonna set these aside and let them cool off because I do not want to uh, burn my fingers trying to pull the skin off. So while those are cooling off, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm going to dice up this onion. And this is about a medium size um, yellow or brown onion. You could also use a white onion or a shallot. Um, it doesn't really uh, matter too much, honestly. You just kind of want an onion flavor. And you don't really need to to worry about um, how big or small the dice is because you're going to be blending up the soup later. So just go ahead and dice up your onion any way that you like. Now I'm going to be making this soup in my instant pot, uh, but you can totally do this on the stovetop as well. Um, I just like the instant pot because then I can keep the soup warm on Thanksgiving day uh, until I'm ready to serve it. So I've got my instant pot on uh, saute, uh, on high and I'm just going to put a little bit of water in there and water saute these until they are soft and just slightly caramelized. So I'm just going to put the entire onion in there, give them a good stir, and then I'm going to um, just kind of set that off to the side and let them get started sauteing. So while those are going, my uh, butternut squash have cooled off and I'm going to go ahead and peel off the skin. Um, I did grab a spoon because I thought I might need it um, to kind of like maybe scoop out <laughs> the, the flesh, but these are incredibly soft. You can see the skin is just coming out super easy. Um, and even the stem just kind of like pulled right off. So um, I didn't even need a spoon for these. It was perfect. So I'm just pulling off all of the skin and I'm gonna put just the entire chunks right into my Instant Pot. So here are my onions. They are still sauteing. Um, it's going to take them quite a bit of time. I'm just gonna add a bit of salt here. 
Um, not too much, I'm gonna add some later, but I am basically just gonna let these sit. Um, I did cut out quite a bit of the footage because who wants to sit here and watch me stir onions? <laughs> so here they are after um, quite a bit of time sauteing. Um, I'm deglazing the pan there with a little bit more water just to get um, all that delicious flavor up off of the bottom. And um, then I'm gonna go ahead and just put in all that yummy roasted butternut squash. And the roasting of the butternut squash, um, you could just microwave it to make it soft, but the roasting brings out this nice uh, caramelized sugary um, flavor of the butternut squash. It, like, it brings out the sugars of the squash. So um, you really do want to roast it, not just um, soften it up. So I'm gonna use my spoon to kind of break that up a little bit, um, just so it's not such big chunks. And then I'm gonna put in four cups of liquid. Now I'm using water, um, and then I'm gonna use um, a uh, Better Than Bouillon to make it into a vegetable broth. You can just go ahead and use uh, vegetable broth to begin with. You can use store-bought, you can use homemade, uh, whatever you wanna use, you can go ahead and use it. Um, I just like Better Than Bouillon because it's nice and convenient. I don't have to store uh, big old packages of broth. So I'm just putting in in one tablespoon of better than bouillon and we're gonna go ahead and mix that up and then I still have my pot on um, high saute I'm going to bring all of this up to temperature remember I let my butternut squash cool down so that I could peel it so um, it's not warm at all <laughs> neither is the water that I put in so I've got the saute mode on and I'm going to heat all of this up and let all of the flavors combine um, and heat that butternut squash back up then I'm also I've got one more ingredient to add um, I am going to zest an orange into this um, soup and this brings out this really bright fresh flavor and it's just a an amazing complement of flavor for this butternut squash. Um, it really just brightens up the soup. So I'm gonna go ahead and zest one entire orange. So I've got all the zest off of that orange. I'm just gonna give it a good stir, get it incorporated, and put the lid on to help it heat up. And while that's heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rind off of the orange and put the fruit right into the soup as well gonna give that a good stir and then I'm also going to add a bit more salt to this so you're gonna salt it um, pretty much depending on how much salt is in the broth that you use so if you used a low sodium broth um, you might want to add a little bit more salt um, but you don't want to add too much um, because this is supposed to be kind of a bright and fresh soup so um, make sure that you're kind of tasting this um, and make sure it's not too much of a savory salty soup so my soup is uh, pretty well heated up, and so I am just going to take my immersion blender to this and uh, blend it up really well. Now, um, this is normally how I've done it for the past 10 years, is I've used my immersion blender, but I recently got a high-speed blender. So I decided that I was actually going to try both ways. So this is what it looks like with just the immersion blender. And it's pretty smooth, but I wanna see if my high speed speed blender uh, makes it and like makes any difference. So I'm gonna put um, about a um, bowlful of the soup into my high speed blender and give it a whirl and we'll see what difference it makes. So I did this for only about 30 seconds um, at kind of like half speed uh, in my blender. And I'll put a link to this blender. It's actually not a very expensive blender, um, but it's comparable to a Vitamix. I love this blender. So it doesn't look very different. Um, here's the regular one on the right and the blended one on the left. But the taste, I can definitely, the texture is definitely a lot a lot smoother so i think i'm going to be blending it in my blender from now on okay up next there's a pesto that goes on top of this and i'm going to put um this is about a half a bunch of cilantro uh, so half a bunch of cilantro into a food processor 
and uh, about a handful of unsweetened coconut flake. Um, and then a little bit more just because I like coconut flake. <laughs> and then I keep serrano pepper um, already diced in my freezer. So I'm just gonna put about a handful of serrano pepper into uh, the food processor as well. I know this is very, very scientific here. <laughs> Um, I, I will try and kind of quantify these amounts for you in the description box down below. Um, but this is kind of a to taste type of pesto. So if you like it, um, more spicy, then, you know, put in more serrano pepper. If you like it more, uh, coconutty, then, uh, put in more coconut. Um, it's kind of up to you. Uh, then I'm going to, um, go ahead and zest one entire orange again to brighten up this soup um, I don't know what it is about orange and butternut squash they just they go so well together so um, zest of one orange and then I'm going to uh, cut off the rind of that orange and uh, put in the fruit then go ahead and put the lid to the food processor on and just pulse it a couple of times until it is a, um, you know, a nice consistency, uh, you know, kind of just chopped up into a pesto. You can make this um, into a puree if you want, so it's a little bit smoother. Um, I personally like the chunks um, when you stir it into the soup and you can kind of see the green bits throughout the nice bright orange soup. It just creates this nice uh, contrast in the soup and it looks really, really beautiful. So um, it's up to you, whichever one you want to do. If you want a nice smooth um, pesto or if you'd like it more chunky, whichever one you want to do, it is totally up to you. All right, so now it is time to plate this and this is absolutely beautiful in a nice white bowl. That orange color is just amazing. And then with the green pesto on top, Oh, I can't even tell you how beautiful this is, especially for your Thanksgiving table. It just is fall in a bowl. Look at that. It is so amazing and it is absolutely delicious. It is a hit. All right, that is it for today's video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, be sure to give it a click right now and I will see you next time.